I'm so excited today to get to talk to my former co-anchor, Keith Garvin, and his beautiful wife, Lisa, about something that honestly I think is such an important topic right now, and that is raising kids in our world today. Keith and Lisa, thank you guys for being here. You guys are so perfect to talk to because I really, I got to watch courtside <laughs> as you guys were raising your daughters, and it was just Honestly, it was so inspiring to me. Keith was my former co-anchor for many years. And That's so right. we talked between stories during sound bites. <laughs> <laughs> About all sorts of stuff. Yeah. So Lisa, I got to really absorb a lot of your knowledge through Keith over the years as well. And so I just have to say, Lisa is the children's director of Second Baptist Campus 1463. Keith just finished his master's in cultural apologetics. He's also pursuing his doctorate of ministry right now. So you two are perfect to talk about this. So I'm super excited to get to really inspire and educate everyone out there. Yeah, okay, we're going to do our best for sure. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for being here. Okay, I want to start with music. And Keith, I know you and I have talked about this over the years. Lisa, <laughs> as a mom, and look, we're about the same age. We went through listening to music that now I listen to and go, oh, gosh, that was a little off color. Right. Yeah. But two wrongs don't make a right. So in this regard, what advice do you have for parents when it comes to music and the music that their kids are listening to? I would say guard it, guard it, guard it, guard their heart. Um, the Bible's clear about what we should listen to and what we shouldn't listen to and how um, listening to those types of things have an impact on how we act and who we become. So um, with us, we allowed them the freedom to make choices, but we also had frequent conversations. So this is what this means. This is why this is not good all the time, constant conversations. And explaining what you just said, that was really good, that you have to guard your heart. Mm -hmm. And from your heart flows your life. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, you know, human nature and even uh, with, with our children, you know, when you just tell them, no, you can't do that and you don't explain, it, it makes them, when you, when you tell someone no, that actually sometimes gives them a desire to want to do it more. Or and so in the case of music, when you just tell them, no, you can't listen to this and don't do it. If you don't explain why, they're going to have some wonderment and they're, they're going to, it might make them be drawn to it even more. So it's important to explain it, why this music and these lyrics, you know, they're, 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 it's not just some happy song with a, with a great melody. You have to really listen to the words it, because think about it. There, there are songs that we grew up with that we haven't heard in 20 years. And it came on the radio. We could, we could sing it almost word for word because <laughs> yes. And th those, you know, we, so we are paying attention and in, in, in those words, even it might be subliminal, the words that we hear in those lyrics, as damaging as they, as they can be, they can end up even subconsciously causing us to, to think and act in ways that we shouldn't act. Yeah. Well, and, and I'm sure you guys can remember back, because as a kid, you're just not as astute to this. The things that you listened to, you know, back in the 90s or whatever, and you were like, yeah, yeah gung-ho on something that now you're not gung-ho on anymore, if you know what I mean, you know, yeah. from, from a different perspective. Yeah, I remember uh, there. I was just thinking about this a couple of days ago. There was a, a you know Whitney Houston, you know late Whitney Houston, God rest her soul. She was you know one of the, the the best voices we've seen in the last generation or two. You know, hands down. Obviously, she you know had some issues. Um, but I was thinking about the one of her early uh, famous songs, uh, "Saving All My Love for You," and, and it's you know it, it displays how wonderful her voice is. The song's really catchy. You can you know drive down the street listening to it. But when you listen to the lyrics, you realize that she's actually talking about saving her love for a man who's married mm -hmm. with a family. Yeah. You know, and it's like, <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. I think, you know, you, she, one of the lyrics is you have your family and they need you there. But, you know, I and I'm, I'm tired of being last on your list. You know I mean? yeah. When you think about it, yes, I mean, it's a song about infidelity, but it sounds so sweet. And, yeah, you know, and, and you think about it, you know, music is going to sound good. You know, I, not to get too, uh, you know, on the, the theological side, but think about it. You know, before Satan was Satan, he was Lucifer. You know, he, he led worship in uh, in, in heaven. 
you know, and, and so so who would have had a more wonderful voice? Who would have known how to com compose music better than Lucifer other than God? And so so he to this day, he knows that music can have an impact on our souls and it can it, it really has an impact on how we think and how we act. So we really, really need to be careful with it. Yeah, it for sure has an emotional draw. Music is one of the most um, uh, emotion driving things that we experience, like even more so than like viewing an artistic piece of uh, artwork, you know, painting or something. For some reason, there's something with music that goes directly to the heart. It is a very emotion um, driving mechanism. The happy music makes you feel happy. Sad music makes you feel sad. Mm -hmm. So we just have to be really careful. Very mindful of that. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, Joel Osteen always would say praise precedes the victory. And that's yeah. why you, you start your church service with praise and worship, singing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's, yeah. there's enjoyment to that. And there's um, power in that, truthfully. Mm -hmm. And if you that. think about it, music's very all-encompassing. Mm -hmm. When you're listening to a song, especially that you like the beat or whatever, I mean, you're all in. Mm -hmm. It's very engaging. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, and, yeah, in, in any genre, you know, I mean, I think a lot of us maybe only have particular genres that we listen to, but you know, like you know, the, the really serious musicians pretty much like it all, and 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 they'll tell you that across the board. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, music is is meant to invoke emotion. You know, mm -hmm. it's it, it's meant to make you think. It's meant to make you feel. And so, when it comes to our children. You know, it's important that we 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 pay attention to what they're listening to and that we're guiding them and shaping them all along the way in every way uh, possible. But then when it comes to the music that they they realize it's important for them to realize that it's not just a song that they hear and they can dance to or even work out to. That This is actually something that's pouring into their soul and pouring into their psyche. And, they, and it, you need to be careful with it. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think it also can desensitize kids if they're talking about drug use, let's say in the song, even if that child doesn't really understand the concept. I mean, that's going in your brain, a mm -hmm. pro drug song. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a big deal. And so yeah. in, in five years, 10 years, whatever, if, if that comes across their, uh, you know, comes into their life or they're offered that, then it's sort of like, well, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, they're drugs. They can kill you. They can ruin your life. Mostly they do ruin your life, but yeah, I'll try it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I was, yeah. um, I, uh, was, we was working, uh, out at the gym I used to work out in. I, I want to go back and work out in, but, uh, I worked out a lot and they would play music in, in the background. And so I, I was getting pretty serious about the workouts. And so a lot of times I would go in the gym on my own. And I would uh, then I, I some of the, the music that I liked that I really didn't pay attention to. I just really liked the beat and they were good workout songs. And then I would I would download them on iTunes and I would listen to them, you know, driving. And I noticed and this isn't not, this isn't anything that the gym necessarily did wrong because, you know, this was these were all adults for the most part. But I kept on hearing the word Molly, you know, Molly. They were they the, these these artists were talking about Molly, Molly, Molly. And so. After a while, you know, again, I wasn't listening to the songs because of the lyrics. I was listening to the songs because I like the beats. But then but but again, it just goes to show subliminally, you know, the lyrics are going to have an impact because then I just noticed I kept on hearing the word Molly over and over and over again. And I'm and I'm thinking, is, is Molly like some famous artist that, you know, young artist that I don't know about and they just all sing about like, who is this Molly person? And I finally looked it up and Molly is a drug. And so you, you had numerous and, and from a couple of different genres and different artists uh, who from different walks of life who were talking about the drug Molly. And when I, I finally start, when I realized what it was and then I actually went to listen to the lyrics, they were just very casually and nonchalantly promoting this drug use like it was no big deal. It's just something you kind of wake up and you do. And so, you know, and, and I'm, an, you know, I'm an adult, you know, I, I, I'm 53 years old. So I, I, you know, Lisa may not always agree, but I think I'm pretty mature. <laughs> but so as a mature adult, yeah, I can't imagine, you know, hearing that over and over again, just that message, you know, Molly, Molly, drug use, drug use, it's okay, no big deal. I, I can't imagine what it would be like for a 12 year old, a 14 year old, a 16 year old who just hears that message over and over. And like you said, wow, okay, everybody's doing it. Everyone's talking about it. It must not be that big of a deal, but 
Yeah, you know, it's, yeah. it's promoting drug use. You know, when you think about it. Uh, and it's a little bit of a false advertisement if you think about it, because a lot of those people aren't doing those things that they're talking about. Mm -hmm. It's true. And our kids are looking up to these individuals who are promoting a lifestyle that they're not even living themselves and they're wanting to emulate and be like these people who aren't even really doing those things. That's a very good point because if they were out drinking all the time, doing all these drugs, they wouldn't be able to get on a stage right? <laughs> perform right. or make business decisions, things like that. Right. So there, that's a very good point. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, you know, well, even when you think about a hip hop culture and, and, and rap music, you know, something that I, I listened to quite a bit when I was growing up, you know, you, you had a lot of uh, those artists portraying a very violent lifestyle mm -hmm. and I, 85 to 90% of them weren't even living that type of lifestyle yet. They were promoting it, you know, right. and they, not, not living it, you know, maybe they, they had seen it, witnessed it, but they weren't living it. And certainly by the time they're making millions of dollars and they're right. going on tour, they, they, their experience is different from the one that they're, that they're rapping about. So, but it, it's still, it's, so in, in a way it's very disingenuous but it's also damaging, you know, because they're they're promoting a lifestyle to our young kids that they don't even subscribe to. Right. And they're making I mean, money off of it. And you look at Snoop Dogg. I mean, you hear what he sings about, raps about. He's a very astute businessman. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very astute. I mean, if you look at the investments he's made and some of the collaborations mm -hmm. he's had over the years and recently, he's a businessman. Without right? a doubt. I'm not saying he's not a talented artist, but... At his core, in my opinion, I mean, he, he's a businessman. And so yeah. clearly he's not out there living the lifestyle in many cases that he's talking about. He's right. in board meetings and <laughs> looking yeah. at numbers and no, I'm not going to invest there. Though, you know, I looked at their uh, performa for the last two quarters and it was off. You know, I mean, yeah. I, can, I can promise you he's having those discussions behind closed doors. Now, maybe that doesn't make for a good song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you yeah, you know, I guess yeah, that that's not too uh scintillating when you think about just sitting in a board meeting talking to to, to other wealthy people making wealth decisions, but <laughs> yeah, and also you know, Snoop Dogg, he also was a PK, uh a preacher's kid, and he came from a two-parent family. And you know, a lot about what, what he raps about does not necessarily promote that image, if you will, you know. Yeah. So right. yeah. Um I mean, but, I think it, it begs to the question of why that um sin sells why why do why is that so enticing not only to us but you know um it the artists are putting out those types of songs for a reason because they sell and that's true you know, the record companies know it mm -hmm. that's true but also i i question and i look at okay well what are our options otherwise if we're not listening to this pop I'm using pop as kind of a huge genre here. I'm just saying modern, modern music. Like, mm -hmm. I don't feel like we have a lot of options out there. You know, yeah. my kids will say, well, I'm listening to country music. It's not as bad. <laughs> well, they're still talking about drinking and not making good sexual choices. So, okay, mm -hmm. maybe they're not promoting violence, but I can't say it's like promoting anything really like Christian valued. Right. Yeah. Well, it, but there are some really uh, talented Christian artists out there, you know, uh, even when, you know, um, hip hop and R&B are probably my overall two favorite genres. I like just about all of them. I listen to country music and, you know, all sorts of stuff as well. But when I think about that, there's some, uh, I, you know, even in the last uh, year, I've come across and discovered some really good Christian rap artists who are very biblically sound and they're talking about very positive biblical, biblical things. And the music sounds good as well. You know, I also think when you, you if you take it outside of music, when you look at movies uh, and even books, we, we have kind of a, a new generation of, of writer authors and also, um, you know, authors who are in, in, in movie, you know, film film industry folks who are starting to kind of find their groove and and, and, and find their place and, and they're making better movies. Unfortunately, I hate to say, you know, uh, a lot of Christian movies over over time, especially like in the 80s and 90s, were not, you know, that great. <laughs> they they just weren't always put together. Production value wasn't super high, but we're starting to see uh, more and more of, of those types of types of movies being done at a, a very, with a very high production uh, level. So just so just like with movies, I think in music, we are starting to see a, a new generation kind of pop up. And so there, there are options, but you do have to search for them. They're not going to be the songs that they play on the radio. 
You know, you, you have to really look and go on iTunes and go online and say, OK, Christian artists and you know, find out who's new, who's you know, what new album came out and then listen to it to see if you like it. But they are out there and they are growing. But you, you really you got to search to find it for you and your kids. OK, good. Well, I, I, I'm glad you put that out there that it just it might take some legwork and maybe. I think for kids maybe who are listening to things that the parents don't love, maybe just kind of starting that transition gradually. Hey, let's listen to this Christian artist or, you know, I think that's a good mm -hmm. way, a good way to start that. I, I would like to say, though, they're, they're going to be exposed. I think it's critically important that we as parents understand and know that our kids are going to be exposed to things along the way. And that's why those those conversations are critically important. But I also think that teaching your children to make wise choices at a young age is critically important and why. So apologetically understanding what they believe and why they believe and being able to discern choices based on that um, is just, it's critical for us to teach our kids as parents today because they're going to be exposed and they're going to hear songs. We do it all the time. And as adults, we learn to discern. And I think we can teach our kids to discern I like that beat, but this is horrible what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. And I, they need to be able to know and understand that and make that choice for themselves. Because at, in college, um, you're not going to be there to say, oh, we're not going to listen to that song or, oh, that song is bad. Because I think um, it's equally important to just for them to be able to understand that this is a negative song. Mm -hmm. This is not a good thing. And then they'll... Um, funnel their own choices. I think that's critically important too, that they're like, uh, oh, I like this beat, but man, this song, it's just, it rubs me the wrong way because it just kind of doesn't align with what I think, you know, once they really start hearing it, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I think, uh, you know, parents, we understandably, and it's our job. We want to preserve our children's innocence for as long as possible. Mm -hmm. So, so we, we have to realize that, but we also have to realize that they are in a world that really doesn't really care about their innocence any longer. I mean, I've been in so many conversations with, people walks of life and they're, you know, kids, they're going to, you know, hear this and they're going to see that anyway. So you might as well, you know, you know, don't try to hide it. And it's not about hiding it, but you, you do want to, uh, you, you don't want, you, you want to preserve their innocence for as long as possible. But at the same time, you also realize that they are walking into a world that doesn't really love them mm -hmm. and, does, and is not going to have the same values that you as a, as a Christian family would have. Mm -hmm. And so you, at the same time that you're preserving their innocence, you have to be working to uh, make sure that when that moment comes, you 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 don't know you because lots of times you're as a parent you're not going to be there, but the band aid is going to be ripped off so to speak, and and that they're going to have that moment where that 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 innocence is 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 in terms of something that they see or something that they hear is lost. Mm -hmm. So at the same time you've been working to preserve their innocence, you also have to prepare them for the moment that that innocence is kind of challenged. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you that that's why you talk to them and you explain to them. So when they do hear the bad music or they do see the bad image that, you know, someone next to them is is, is seeing, you've prepared them to deal with that and be able to walk away from it as a, instead of walking into it. You know, it's kind of it's a two two it's a two part job when it comes to that. Sure. You know? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And and, you know, I it says in the Bible, we are in the world, but not of the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And understanding and living that distinction is not easy for children. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, that that's our job as a parent to be there for those early, very formative years to explain how that works and try our best. And, and you're right. We, I think as parents and, and look, you had all girls, I have all boys, but that's a commonality that we all try and shelter our kids from the world around us. Mm -hmm. And I've heard that same argument, Keith, where people go, well, they're going to see it anyway. Mm -hmm. But in my opinion, and, and this is just my opinion, you know, seeing and understanding and dealing with something at 10 or 12 is different than seeing and understanding it at 16, 18, 20. Oh, big time. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so I think as parents of younger children, because our perspective is for sure broadened because we have very much older children mm -hmm. um, as when they're younger guard. That for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. When they're younger, guard their heart, protect them. That is your job. But as they get older, teach them to choose for themselves because that is like critically important for them um, that they learn. Because at some point we have to realize as parents, 
not only are they going to have to choose for themselves, but they're going to stop believing us. Right. There's that natural separation that like my mom has always told me, I'll use Keith as an example. What did your mom tell you about roller coasters? Oh, yeah. I'm, she used to tell me if, if you ever get on a roller coaster, you're going to die. You, you, <laughs> oh, man, that's dramatic. A, a roller coaster will kill you. So I, I knew you bet, you better not, not we, we were going on a trip to Astroworld uh, and, you know, from, from my hometown of Bryan. And she said, OK, Keith, Anthony, you better not get on a roller coaster. And I'll know if you did because you're going to die. So don't get on a roller coaster because roller coasters will kill you. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And you know what? I got on the roller coaster anyway. <laughs> and the funny thing is you probably did that because you saw other people get on the roller coaster yeah. and survive. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, as they get older, it's so funny because you can tell them, and I tell my kids this all the time and have told them this as teens, um, you're going to watch kids drink and drive and nothing happen. And the thing is, you're not going to be able to choose the consequence of your action, but you can choose not to take the action and they need to learn to choose that for themselves. Because a lot of times as they get older, we're not right next to them when they're making those critical choices, right. that critical thinking and choosing for themselves and knowing what they believe and why they believe is it's so important to instill in them as they're young and then step back and let them make those choices as they get older, which is super hard as a mom, I know for, for sure, is to let them choose, let them make a mistake. It's hard. Mm -hmm. um, but it's so much easier to help them in the small mistakes when they're younger than when they make huge mistakes. As they get older, the stakes are so much higher, right? Mm -hmm. The things that can happen from the mistakes that are just so much, uh, have such a huge impact. Mm -hmm. So I think it's good to let them exercise that muscle and teach them when they're younger um, and that's not like expose them to everything that's like you know let them make age appropriate choices and teach them to use um, their own you know um, the Holy Spirit working in their own heart in their life to make choices not just mom because mom said mm -hmm. uh, being the reason yeah because the truth of the matter is you know they might see dozens of of their friends drink or or do other things, you know, drugs and drive and, and be fine and mm -hmm. nothing happens. But there are so many families that will tell you that there might come a time when they 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 exhibit that behavior and something does happen mm -hmm. and it changes their life forever. It changes your family forever. It changes another family's life forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's there's no reason to to play with with any of that, you know. Mm -hmm. You just because you just because you have a lot of friends around you and and hey they're doing all of this they're listening to this music they're drinking they're doing whatever um so i guess it it's it's okay it's okay until it's not okay yeah. <laughs> it's okay until someone gets hurt you know and so that's that's just something we have to remind them that there are consequences and you know yes we again as i said we we want to protect our kids innocence we want to protect them as much as possible as a matter of fact that's our job but as we, we know as adults, that sometimes the best lessons you learn are learned after you make mistakes. And, and I think that's one thing we, we see with a lot of parents today is that they're afraid to let their kids fail and make mistakes. And the, pro the problem is, you know, they're going to get a job one day and they're going to pitch an idea to their boss and their boss is going to shoot it down. And, and in that sense, they failed. They're not going to get every single thing that they want. It's not yeah. going to go according to plan all the time. So, so some, you know, protecting them and guiding them, you, you, you should for sure. But you also need to do that in a way that allows them to when they get to a certain age. And we all know our kids and we know some of them are going to be more mature than others at, at, at different points. But we allow them to start making those decisions with guidance. So then when they do fail, you can be there and you can kind of, you know, pick up the pieces, if you will. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, you know, we, our job, we, we, we don't want them to touch that electric fence, like stay away, stay away. We, we pick them up, we carry them away. We tell them don't go toward it. They keep going, they keep going. And at some point, depending on the situation, you might need to let them touch the fence so they see for themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then they know, okay, this is what mom and dad meant, you know? And so then, and then you can bring them back and say, you know, this is what we were trying to tell you, but hopefully in that instance, when they can see it for themselves, that'll be the experience oftentimes is the, is the very best teacher. So yeah. there's no question. And this kind of leads us to my, my, my big question here is that 
I feel like we live in a culture today that very much promotes sin. We were just talking about the music and this sort of mentality and attitude. If it feels good, it can't be that bad for you and it's okay, which is not true. <laughs> you know? Yeah, not at all. A lot of really bad things out there uh, in the moment feel great. Drugs feel great. I'm, I'm sure for people who try that and get into that, uh, but we know the consequences there. So, you know, what advice do you have for parents out there who, again, from two people who have done it correctly, um, to, un to help your kids understand, yeah, God forgives us for our mistakes, but he doesn't always prevent us from suffering the consequences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. I would, go to, ahead. to help kids understand sinful ways and see those in our world. And what's your advice for that? I, one of the things that we did all the time, often, I would say, talk to them, talk to them, talk to them, communicate. The world is loud. It is shouting at our children. It is promoting these things and it is counter to what we believe. So we need to be louder, just constantly talking. Um, we spent a lot of time in the car, driving to activities. And most of the time I had conversations with our girls in the, in the car. Um, and it would be, it would start very young. When they were young, we would see an ambulance and one of them had a thing that they learned like, if you see an ambulance, stop what you're doing and pray right away for the person that's in there. Someone, some teacher told them to do that. And we would do that. And um, I would just ask one of them, you know, I'm driving, who's going to pray for the person? And they would pray, oh, Lord, we don't know what happened. If, if there was a fire, you know, we pray for the family. We pray that everybody's safe. And immediately after that, I would ask questions. It was a car accident. What do you think happened? What could, what could be a possibility that could happen, you know, and just constantly having those conversations and not shying away from, man, bad things happen, right? And how how do you think this happened? Or when something did happen um, that was negative, other than like a car accident or something, and we saw it, we discussed it. How how do you think they got in that predicament? Mm -hmm. You know, if, if they came across something on TV, you know, how do you think that happened? What do you think they were doing? Was that a good choice or a bad choice? Mm -hmm. And then they're kind of learning from the world around them, even in a movie, you know, wow, that, that was not a good choice, you know, and we talked about it. Why or why not? You know, and um, we still do that to this day. We, we debate a lot of different things in our family because now that they're older, they have their own thoughts and we listen to, you know, what they have to say. Why, why or why not that, that why or why not that was a good choice or a bad choice, you know? We still we still do that with them. Yeah, our girls have uh, lots of thoughts and opinions, and they're they're never afraid to share them with us. <laughs> <Never>. so, <laughs> which is a good thing, we though. You too, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, most definitely. Yeah, I would say you know it's uh I, you know L Lauren, you and other uh, parents with with young kids, uh, you know I I pray for for you guys all the time because it's it's you know parenting has never been easy, but it's certainly uh, been made more difficult you know, in, in the age of social media and, and just where we are in the world right now, uh, the, the the world is going to disguise sin as well as it can. It's going to make it sound as good as it could sound, feel as good as it can feel, smell, taste, all that stuff as good as possible. So it's it, it really, really deceptive. And that's really the work of the enemy. You know, the, the enemy is, is not the enemy's what we have to understand and then in a loving way, but also figure out the best way for each of our children to, to get this across is that at the end of the day, the, the, the enemy wants us dead. Um, it, now, if you are already a Christian, uh, you, he can't do anything about that. He can't take your salvation away. But what he what he can do, what he wants to do is hamper your ability to serve God. So he will he will do everything he can to try to prevent that. Everybody else, if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, his goal is to kill you. And so you don't ever get that that the chance to accept Jesus Christ. And so you're and you're going to be in eternity with 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 him instead of with Jesus. And so we have to understand that. So he, he's not going to just walk up and say, I want to kill you. You know, he, he he would never do that. He's too crafty for that. And so his schemes are not going to be so direct. Uh, they're they're going they're going to be shielded in things that look good and feel good and, and and smell good and all and all that. So we have to really be wise ourselves 
And we have to under, we have to understand the culture ourselves as parents. Uh, and, and that way we can explain it to our children and, and we can protect them even even better. But but the, the, the thing is, you know, the, the culture is so sinful. Um, and, and, and you know, like we were talking about with music, they, they just make it sound good and, and it, they, they just lull you into sleep like, OK, oh, wow. Well, actually, this isn't so bad after all, you know, because if you make it sound good, uh, there was a, a recent uh, Hollywood producer who, who passed away just a couple of weeks ago. And one of the things that, you know, they, they knew about him was that his idea was if, if you can make someone laugh at something. It's hard for them to stay mad at it for very long. So. Uh, what this individual did was take a lot of uh, really serious cultural issues and he would make people laugh at them to give them a different perspective, but also to take them less seriously. And so things that could actually harm our, our you know, our families and our kids, uh, it, he, he very much uh, had had different opinions than I would say most parents, especially Christian parents. And so uh, what he would do is he would he would he would you know, create these these programs where they would laugh at these very serious issues. And then after, you know, five, 10 years of a show, it's like, oh, well, you know what? That's really not that bad, you know, because we just spent five years laughing at it, you know. And so so that and that's just an example of how 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 the enemy and how some people will will take something that they'll they'll they'll, they'll, they'll take what is bad and make it good or try to make it seem good. And they'll take what is good and try to make it seem bad. And, and we just have to realize that it, it, it's so deceptive. Uh, and, and as parents, we really have to be on our P's and Q's and we have to really we have to understand it ourselves in order for us to be able to impart that to our children to help them understand it. And and, and, and we also have to understand, you know, how they how they think, you know, they just the terms they use. Mm -hmm. It's really, really important for us to know the words mm -hmm. that they use. And, you know, not because we're, we're going to talk like them, but when they talk it's important for us to know what they're saying, you know, because yeah. kids speak a different language, you know, <laughs> they have, you know, there's, uh, you know, these terms now, Riz and all this other That's stuff. That's so fire. Riz. Fire, I know, yeah, yeah. So not, you know, yes. the three of us, we go around talking like that, they're going to think we're, you know, oh, we're right weird now. and crazy, but <laughs> so, so we shouldn't, we don't learn it so we can talk that way, but we learn it so we can understand what our kids are talking about, and so then we can understand what the culture is trying to say to our kids as well, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, but it, it's so, you know, uh, parents of younger kids have such a really tough job today because the society, this culture is so deceptive uh, mm -hmm. and it's just it's masking so many bad things and with, with just really flowers and and butterflies and they, 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 they're making bad look so good. And, and it's easy to fall for that. Yeah. Well, I would say, oh, go ahead. Lauren. Well, I just I always remind my kid, you know, Lucifer means light. He was the mm -hmm. most beautiful angel. Mm -hmm. He wasn't mean looking or dark or scary. He was beautiful. Yeah. And so sin frequently looks packaged up beautifully. Mm -hmm. Like it's really not going to harm us that much. Yeah. Right. And so when you understand that concept, you know, and I think that's a, it's a big concept for adults to understand, let alone kids, but to understand that the, these luciferic energies that we see are going to usually look pretty nice and good mm -hmm. and enticing. And like, yeah, we're drawn to it. Like we're drawn to light. Mm -hmm. So helping them to understand that I think is huge. So that when something comes along their path in life where they go, well, this just looks lovely. They can at least stop and go, Hmm. Okay. Is it really, is it good mm -hmm. for me? Or does it just, have some sort of enticing element that I'm drawn to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's what, uh, uh, I got some advice as a, as a dad, you know, you, uh, when you have daughters, you, you treat them, you know, like they're, they're little princesses and, you know, you take them out on dates and you open the door for them and you, you know, you're respectful around them. So when it's time for them to start dating, um, you you've you've shown them such a good example of, of how they should be treated by a male. Now, obviously, it's a different context that hopefully when, you know, the, the boys start coming knocking on the door and they're, they're taking your daughters out, they understand what it's like to be treated properly. So when they're not treated that way, they have the strength and the ability to walk away. Yeah. You, you've equipped them with that simply by by the example and by also taking the time and pouring the time into them to, to do that. And that's just that's just one example. That's just one one, one really important area that we we help our kids grow mm -hmm. and, and we we protect them 
but we also show them through action how things are should should be done and, and how how they should, they should even think about certain things. Yeah, but I would say listen to them. You know, oh, let yeah. them know that you are their um, chief advocate, that you love them, and that good can be fun. I mean, I think in our household we try to make the environment fun, right? That we we are going to live within a certain boundary, but we are going to have the time of our lives doing it. We we have a great time. Um, and we're going to have fun and we're going to love you. And I'm your biggest advocate. So if there's a problem or if there's a struggle, not only am I talking to you about the things that we see, but I'm going to listen to you. And we used to give them amnesty days where they could just tell us anything. We're not going to respond. Um, just tell us how you feel about that. Tell me what you're thinking. Tell me something you've done that you want me to know that you were afraid to tell me. Um, those were hard, hard conversations sometimes. Yeah, bet. Um, but knowing that we are their chief advocate, that we love them and that we want what's best for them is just such a good foundation too, so that they'll come to us when they're approached with the enticing thing. And they may be confused that, that come to me, mm -hmm. I'm not going to push you away. I'm not going to look down my nose at you. I'm going to listen oh. and I'm going to try to understand. And I'm going to tell you from the best of my ability from a biblical standpoint, why this is not good or why this is okay. Yeah. And that, yeah. Yeah. And they also have to see, you know, uh, for those who, who have both parents in the home, they need to see mom and dad working together. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, obviously with, with uh, single parents who, who work so hard and, and, and the job is, is, is even tougher, you know, a lot of the supplies as well. But, you know, uh, when you have both mom and dad in the house, you know, they have to see that you two are on the same page mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, we know kids being humans, um, they will try to oftentimes play one against the other. Um, yeah. They will uh, if, if they see a weakness in one, they'll try to exploit that, you know, to their advantage. But one thing, uh, you know, Lisa, uh, she came across this years ago and not that I was against it, but I just had as a as as a dad, as a as a father, as a male, I kind of. I, I thought about it differently at first, but she was able to win me over. And uh, she was she saw on a show um, a, a young man who got uh, got into an, an accident and just uh, caused a, a car accident. And the individual in the other car was just you know horribly you know maimed and and for life. And and they had to you know sit down in in, in front of that person and and see the damage that was done. And the mother said that her biggest re regret was her son knew because he was drinking and driving um, and was in a really bad in bad shape that night. He knew that he couldn't come home because he was going to be judged by his parents and, and be in trouble. And they weren't going to, you know, and and she wishes she that on that day, she wished that he would have known that he could have just called them and said, hey, I made a mistake. I don't want to get in this car. Can you can you come get me? Um, and so our kids know that um, they they all have keys to our house, and so they they all know that um, if 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 you ever need to come home, if you ever if you're ever in a bad spot, doesn't matter if it's three o'clock in the morning, you have the key to the house, you know the code, all that. You 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 have a place to come. We're not going to shut. Now we. We, we need to, you know, once, you know, we get, the morning comes and that afternoon we need to sit down and have discussion about what's going on and what happened and what we can do to fix this and repair it and heal. But you, you we're never going to shut you out and say you can't can't be here that, you know, kids need to know that that home is a safe place. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. And that we're going to love you regardless. So yes. I'm usually like, just call. Yeah. Don't try to handle it on your own. If you feel like there's if you're even have a question about it, call. Mm -hmm. we'll answer, you know, we're going to be there. Um, and because I think that's important. A lot of times they are going to be faced with things that they just don't know how to handle it on their mm -hmm. own. Mm -hmm. um, but where they look for the answer is also important. So important. You're exactly right. And, you know, I like how Dr. Tony Evans has described it over the years. Families have rules. God has rules. Sports have rules. If you went to a football game and, there were no boundaries, no rules, no parameters. Wouldn't be much fun to watch. Right. I <laughs> just look right. like a chaotic. A yeah, a out there. So life and families all have to have boundaries and uh, there has to be a field goal and there has to be, you know, I mean, it, it's it's a good analogy. And I've I've tried to explain that to my kids. And look, 
you guys have different rules for your family is what I have, is what the neighbors have, is what our friends have. Because I think kids a lot of time goes, well, such and such gets to stay out later. Okay. But they have other rules that you might not like also, <laughs> you know, yeah. mm -hmm. so kind of understanding that, that all families have rules. The world has rules. God has rules and understanding to how to live and function kind of in those parameters is, is golden. Yeah. Yes. Isn't it funny though, that I experience this with families all the time that I think also like what Keith said, a lot of times we just want to be, we want our kids to have the best. So we, you know, relax on rules and stuff, but we need to know that boundaries are best. How many times do we teach, see parents teach a kid from very young, like at two, you cannot have this because you're allergic to it. And the kid, it learns like, I'm, I'm not going to take that. I don't care how they wrap it. I don't care how they package it. I cannot have this because it's bad for me. Even if they've never really had a bad reaction, right? They can um, ascribe to that. They can yeah, sure. teach our child, your child, they have an allergy, so they're not taking it. I don't care how someone tries to give it to, give it to them. And I think we need to put that same level of, of importance on a lot of these spiritual and biblical foundational things that we want our kids to know and learn is that it's just life or death. You've never experienced the bad part of this, but I'm telling you that you can't have it. You know, it's a very good point. Yeah. yeah. I like, I'm, I'm going to use that next time I teach. That's a really good analogy. It is good. It is good. Well, I just want to say thank you so much. You guys are both, you're so wise. Again, I got to watch you parent over the years and you always inspired me. And I just wanted to kind of bring that to other people. And so I just, Thank you guys for being here with us today and let's do it again. I had a lovely time talking to both of you. I miss you guys. We need yes, to we miss you as well. We got to hang out. We got to do dinner sometime, the four yes. of us. Yes. <laughs> yes, we'll do that. All right. Thank you guys so All much. Right. Okay. Thank Take you. care.